Hey everyone, welcome to my channel Learn Chess TV and welcome back to this series of the Accelerator Dragon. This is the third part of the Accelerator Dragon and I've already set up the position not to waste any time on the introductions because you, you must have probably gotten a good hang of the Accelerator Dragon variation and how the system works. So guys in the previous uh, video I mean in case you haven't watched the previous video I highly suggest you do that you should probably do it right now because this video is a continuation from the second video most of the videos are continuation from the previous videos so it's better if you follow the sequence and I've, I've been making videos keeping this order in mind and I would, I would want you to ensure that you're following the sequence as well so guys uh, let's analyze this variation so we saw that after e takes d5 in takes d5 we analyzed knight takes c6 in depth we analyzed this variation in depth in the second part of the accelerated dragon so in this video as i talked about in my previous one uh we shall analyze in takes d5 so what's going to happen after in takes d5 is that Black's going to capture this uh, knight and the best move for white to continue here is play bishop f3. Knight takes c6 is no threat guys, you should know this because I'm just going to capture it with the pawn and if queen takes d5, pawn takes d5 and like a variation that I showed in my previous video series in the previous uh, video in the second part of the tutorials so this pawn is attacked and we can bring the rook this rook here after the bishop goes here uh, this rook can come here pawn to a5 a4 a3 create making these pawns weaker and thus winning all these pawns so it's pretty easy to play from here guys i don't think white is gonna allow you to uh, get into this position he's probably gonna play bishop f3 many games have been played uh, in this variation and bishop f3 is commonly played and for bishop f3 uh, the engine might suggest you queen a5 again guys you can't always play the engine moves because it doesn't even seem realistic in most of the positions um, the best move here to, the best move uh, to continue from here is play queen c4 and white can uh, let's uh, there are two ways to continue from here one is capture this knight from the knight and capture the knight from the bishop so we shall analyze both these variation guys uh, let's first see um, bishop takes c6 if bishop takes c6 we take it with the pawn and we're gonna play c5 next so white may play c3 and we play e5 here after nb3 or nf3 doesn't matter where he goes we play bishop f5 we are trying to get the rooks we are trying to make them more mobile we are trying to make the rooks uh, uh, become more mobile and get into a more active position so if white played queen c1 with the idea of bishop h6 we're going to play rook fd8 and if bishop h6 now then we can just capture play a5 next a4 uh, let's, uh, we can continue from here guys if I play rook fe1 we play a4 knight d2 we can try to swap queens here Queen takes f4, e takes f4. If white played something like this, bishop c2. This is attacked, and this is on the same line. If rook c1, rook takes d2, it's easily winning for black. So there's nothing more to analyze from there. And even in the position, if white played knight f3, which is the accurate move, black still has a better position after rook a b8. You can see that white cannot defend the pawn with uh, rook a b1 because there's a bishop. And if rook e2, 
then we can play bishop g4. So the idea is to make a double pawn and play a3 and then play rook d3. The pawn structure is completely shattered and you clearly ha will have a better position uh, even though you're pawned down. You'll get three to f two to three pawns at least. So it's, I wouldn't say it's winning, but at the higher levels, people will win this from black very easily. But I would say it's very comfortable for black to play from here. I would say it's borderline winning. So I think we have achieved the purpose of analyzing this variation in depth. And let's see the other variation, guys. So the other variation is the other variation is uh, knight takes c6. So this variation was played in a game that was uh, that happened between two grandmasters. Was played sometime some sometime back. I don't remember the year exactly, but uh, it was a very nice game, and I, I've recorded this game. And so I'll be showing you how the game went and we can even analyze if any other deviations were made from this variation once we see knight takes c6. Knight takes c6, we play pawn takes c6. So the game went like this guys. Uh, white played c3. And black played bishop e6. Which seems like the accurate move. So after queen e2. Queen takes e2, bishop takes e2, and black played rook fb8. He didn't play rook ab8 because he wants to keep an eye on this a7 pawn as well. So that's the reason rook fb8, b3. You can see that if white played uh, rook ab1, black can just capture the pawn in e2, and after rook a1, rook into b2, and it's easy winning for black. So, white, uh, white played uh, b3 because black cannot immediately capture the pawn on c3 because of rook c1 and this is attacked. So what's best for black to do is play a5. Make the structure even weaker by playing a5 and e4. So white played rook c1 in that game and black played a4. So guys, um, I think white played uh, something like uh, bishop d4 and it's pretty easy to continue from here after e takes b3 but even if white played something like b4 then you can see that this pawn is hanging as well, this pawn. So it's easy to continue from here if white played c4 too then this pawn is hanging. Either ways, one or the other pawn is hanging. If pawn takes pawn, then we can just capture it with the rook. And this pawn is hanging. There is no way to defend this pawn. So it's easily, uh, it's easily we got a position with a clear advantage for black. And we are on move 18, guys. So the analysis is very deep. And I don't think you will face any other variations other than these. And what if uh, the game went on with c3, but what if white played b3? If white played b3, what we could do is, uh, there are two ways of continuing from here. There is queen c3, attacking the rook, or else play queen a6. You can play queen c3. Queen c3 is fine. After queen c3, white can play queen e2. For queen e2, we don't just not uh, we don't take this rook, guys. We, maybe we can do that, but I'll show you what happens if we immediately capture the rook. Because you can see that we're getting two rooks, but you're missing out on something here. Queen e2 is white is setting up a trap. After queen takes a1, rook takes a1, bishop takes a1, white is gonna play bishop takes c6. If rook b8, white is gonna play bishop takes a7. 
and the only move of black here is rook b4 and white is gonna play queen takes e7 and white is almost winning here white has a clear advantage and black has got to take his rook to g4 white will play h3 and seems like this is the only position for the rook to go to and white will play something like bishop c5 this rook if bishop g7 then white can play queen d6 probably or even queen c7 i like queen c7 because this rook is hanging and this rook as well and white is clearly winning guys and this all happened forcefully as you saw that there were no other moves for black's rook to go to so queen e2 is a trap setup and you don't directly take the rook instead you make space for the rook here you play a5 the idea is to get the bishop to a6 and threaten to capture the rook here the best move for white to play from here is bishop e4 white could play rook d1 but it's not a problem for us we could play bishop a6 so it's not a problem at all and if white played rook queen e1 now then queen takes e1 rook takes e1 bishop takes a1 we are clearly a material up we are an exchange up and uh, we are we can easily win from here So the best move of the best move to somehow create a block here against the bishop a6 is by playing bishop e4. It is the best move. But we still play bishop a6 and after bishop d3, bishop into d3, pawn into d3, queen into a pawn. Now we can play queen into a1, get the two rooks. And we have a4, we have two rooks. White, white can play as bishop c5, guys, but it does not matter at all because we can just continue with uh, something normal like rook fd8, attacking the spawn, get this rook here. If white played queen into e7, then rook fe8. And if white moved its queen anywhere, there are a few moves, there are a few squares for the queen to go to but there is a checkmate on e1 I don't see how that can be stopped and it's clearly winning for black and if white put, took the pawn with bishop then rook e8 again there's a pin and I'll play bishop f6 like if white played something like this then we play bishop f6 it's clearly winning for black So guys, I think uh, you must be satisfied with uh, the variations uh, that I show. I think I think I've covered almost all the variations in the bishop e2 system, the bishop e3 and bishop e2 system. That is uh, the bishop e3 and bishop e2 system. So we uh, in, the, in my previous video I talked about knight takes c6. We covered that variation in depth in this video. I've covered knight takes d5 and then we play and how we play queen c4 I think I talked I talked about it so uh, in the next video I'll probably talk about the nb3 variation that uh, is not seen much white can play in b3 here so it's not seen much but uh, I have a special repertoire against the nb3 variation as well that is by playing a5 so we will see that in the next video guys so i hope you enjoyed this video and uh, hit please hit the thumbs up button if you like the video and please consider subscribing to my channel because i'll be making a lot of videos about this and not only on this i've been making videos on end games uh middle games and many other openings as well like the mora gambit so i would highly encourage uh you extending your support to me this way I'm not I don't need anything else guys I just need your support by our uh, positive comments 
subscribing to my channel this will motivate me to make more videos about this topic you can leave a lot of i mean you can ask me anything on the comment section i will address it with uh, a reply or at least I'll, if it's required i'll make a video as well i've done that in the past so i'll address it with a video as well if the doubt is helpful to other people as well so thank you guys thanks for watching